ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله وهو العلي العظيم that is almighty god is free from all imperfection he is perfect there is all the praise is to allah there is no god but the one god allah allah is greater than anything we can imagine or do and there's no true power or might except what allah gives and he is indeed the exalted the magnificent one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in that is the prayers and the peace and the blessings be upon muhammad forever and ever his righteous companions as well dear believers and members here of temple number 37 here in akron ohio and guests from this area i am indeed honored to be before you on such a prestigious occasion the occasion to celebrate and to show gratefulness for our brother al Haj Malik Shabazz, one who went to the battle line, went to the front lines for us. And as a result of him doing that, we honor and we love and we treasure him all the days of our lives. And as a testimony and as a dedication to him, I'd like to recite to you the beautiful surah of the Quran called The War Horse. And as you can see, I have some kind of comfortability with this Alugatul Arabiya, that is the Arabic language. And we call it a tongue of the angels. This is a language that has so much beauty and rhythm and spirit and protection from Allah that it behooves you and I, if we say we are Muslims, to learn this language. And I'm here this weekend to do just that, teach what I know of this beautiful language. It's not the Arab's religion. It's not the Arab's language either. In fact, most of you may not be aware that you can throw a rock from Africa to Arabia right now, and you don't have to be no big, strong Iron Man to do it. Those people have been interacting and marrying each other for centuries. And we know that Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was he? An African Arab. He was not an Arab prophet. He was an African Arab. How do we know that? Because he comes from what? the seed of Ishmael. And who was Ishmael's mama? Hajar. So I tell you, without a doubt, this man, Muhammad, peace be upon him, had our blood. So you know, as well as I know, that many times the immigrant brothers who come from across the water, they may want to put into you all's mind or my mind, are we more Muslim than you all? Because we came from the precincts of Mecca, or we came from Pakistan. We right there in the thick of things, you know? And I tell them, we got the man's blood in us. <laughs> and you can see how that disarms them, you know, like, hey, I got the man's blood in, in, in me. His right-hand man, Bilal, called the Avan. Zaid was his uh, servant. He had an uh, African woman as a wife and all of this. So the man is our brother. He's from the hood. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Praise be to Allah. So I begin, A'udhu billahi min al-shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Wal adiyati dombaha Fal muriyati kaddaha Fal mugirati subaha Fa'afarna bihi naka'a Fa'wasatna bihi jam'a in al insan li rabbihi lakanud wa innahu ala dhalika la shahid wa innahu li hubbil qaymi la shadid afala ya'lamu idha bu'thira ma fil qubur wa husila ma fis sudur in Rambahu Bihim Yawma Idil Khabir Sarakallahu Ladin Translated Wal Adi Yati Dabaha Allah is saying here clearly that I swear to you humanity by the war horses that run with the panting breath. You know that horse that runs and Real loud, you know, he gives his all. 
at the Kentucky Derby, right? In fact, we just had one here recently, the fastest time ever, right? Gives his all. Allah said, I'm swearing by that one. And he says, And he strikes sparks of fire, fear into people. So in this instance, imagine a war horse at night, at night. You know, a lot of times you prepare for battle, you go in the nighttime. So, so you can really, you know, get an advantage, right? But if you got a cavalry of war horses, the sparks from the hoofs coming together, you can see that way off in the distance. And the enemy know you coming, right? <laughs> the enemy, he know you coming. But this horse, he's fearless. This is a parable, Allah's giving an example, a, a metaphor of the obedience of a horse. The horse, he doesn't care if you got a, a wicked person on him or a righteous person on him. He goes into the midst of the foe, it says here. He strikes sparks of fire with his fire coming from the hoofs. And then it says, and then when the day comes, he what? Pardon me, Thalmugirati Subaha. And he pushed home the charge in the morning. He's still coming. He hasn't rested. And wasn't our brother Malcolm like that? This man was devoted to the upliftment of this African American here in the hells of North America, as Elijah Muhammad has said. And I've heard, I don't want to talk too long, that many believe that there was a conspiracy to kill him, one of the reasons for the uh, dismissal of Malcolm from his life was because they thought that he was getting ready to go before the United Nations on behalf of the OAU to denounce America for the treatment of us here in America. That is a theory for why he was killed. So getting back to this horse that we're dedicating to our brother, and it says, oh and they raise the dust in the clouds. So the horse, he shows or serves a function of what? Putting the dust out there so that the enemy can't see. Confuses him, right? The dust. And then after doing that, the Quran says, He's ready to jam. This is jam'ah, but jam'ah means to come together in the middle, but in a way it's a subtle play on he's ready to jam. The horse is ready to jam, okay? And it says here, and they penetrate forthwith in the midst of the foe as a congregation of horses and willing to stay there even though guns and arrows and all of that is all around. In fact, I've heard that when they have movies, Horses are so trained that they hear all these gunshots all over the place and they don't even flinch. Obedient servant. And then Allah asks the question, or pardon me, gives the statement. After giving you this beautiful parable of this horse, he says, Truly the human family is to his Lord ungrateful. So the parable is clearly showing you, look how I gave you this horse, man. He your slave. He'll run himself to death. Do you, know all, do you know the horses will run themselves to death? If you keep beating him, he will give his whole life, his spirit, his soul, to do what you want him to do. So Allah is saying, truly the humanity is ungrateful to his Lord. And then it says, well, And to that fact, the human being bears witness to his deeds. Look at what Malcolm did. He gave his life for us. When are we going to come together? As our brother Rodney said so eloquently, why can't we all get along? You know? When is that going to happen? When are we going to have enough intellectual intelligence to not separate ourselves because we have an ideological difference? I'm willing to die for this religion. You're willing to die for this religion. Why shouldn't we be in unity for that cause? It's very, very important for us to accept that we are one yeah. and we should get along. And it says, well, And strong is the human being in his love for good. So here Allah said, man, you ungrateful. 
but you want all of the good. You want a fine car, you want a, a, a beautiful wife, you want this, you want that. But you showing ungratefulness to me, Allah is saying to us. He's appealing to our heart to be obedient to him like the war horses to us so that he can open up the heavens to us. And as Elijah Muhammad has said, and Farrakhan has said, and all of us have said, that if any people Allah would deliver, it would be us. Imam Wakti Muhammad had said years ago that we are the newest people on the block. And that's true. You know any newer people than the African American on the block or in the world? No. The bottom rail shall become the top. We believe in the scripture, like I said. Abraham, know for a surety that your seed will be afflicted in the land. We believe that's us. We believe that Allah is going to bring us out with great substance. He's doing it now. We just got to get on the program and be a part of it. And then it says, Does he not know, does not the human being know, that when that which is in the graves is scattered abroad, and that which is locked up in the human breast is made manifest? Yeah. That their Lord had been well acquainted with everything that went down, even to that day. So this is the beautiful Surah 100 of the Quran. And I'm not one to, you know, do a sales pitch because I want you all to pat my pocket with some money or anything like that. But I can say to you this, that if you want to learn Alugatul Arabiya, that is the Arabic language, Allah has blessed me with some understanding of it. And I want to share it with you. I know from studying, from bouncing what I have studied from this Quran on sheikhs and all of that, that Allah has blessed me with some understanding of this language. And we, we are here to offer it so that we can be what? Able to pick up this book and get mileage out of it, get spirit out of it. We're not talking about just being able to recite, just to boast. We're talking about getting the light, getting the understanding. And believe me, we have it in the community to give. Praise be to Allah. So I'd just like to just tell you real quickly that I'm from the teachings of Elijah Muhammad myself. I came in in 1973, and I was in a hurry to get a haircut from a barber shop. And uh, the brother there was uh, a follower of Elijah Muhammad. And uh, I was having a little problem with the white man on the job. <laughs> okay? He tells me he's the devil. I said, yeah, you acting like the devil on the job, I got. <laughs> So I bought an album from him, you know, uh, Judgment of the World yes. is now. I believe it was part two. And uh, I'm laying down on my floor at home, listening. And Elijah Muhammad says, And they have found many nations under the sands of Arabia. They deek and deek. I said, what is this man talking about? He can't even say dig. <laughs> he said deek and deek. This is our brother Elijah, may Allah grant him paradise. They deek and deek, you know, I'm laughing, you know. And then shortly thereafter he said, well look at here, if a man don't treat you right, how is he going to teach you right? And you know that that woke me up. So why could I, or how could I say I don't love Elijah Muhammad? That got me to say, well hey, I know this devil ain't treating me right. He's sick and dog.